In the previous video, we've met Scapy, an awesome tool to work with frames using Python. We've learned how to sniff frames, how to filter them, and how to execute a function on every frame we sniff. In this video, we'll learn how to create and send frames using Scapy. Let's start with creating a frame. So for that, uh, we can simply create an ethernet layer using ether like so, and then we can stack additional layers on top of it. So for instance, we can stack an IP layer like so. Let's call it frame. And now we can look at it. Cool. Alternatively, we can just add some raw data as follows. So we can use ether and then some raw data. So let's say, hello world. Now the frame looks like so. We can also use frame.show to look at it. And we see an ethernet layer with a destination address, a source address, a type field, and then some raw data. Cool, now if you wanna specify a specific value, for instance, the destination address of the frame, we can do it when we initially create the frame, uh, like so. So when we create the frame, within the ethernet layer, we can specify dest equals and the value we want, in this case, a, 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 and so on. So now the destination address is what we specified or we can modify the specific field after creation. So now we've already created the frame object and now I can modify it. So I'll go to frame in the ethernet layer to the destination field and I'm gonna set the value to BB, BB and so on. So if I look at it, you can see that the destination field's value has been changed. Cool, so how can we look at the frame we've just created? So one way is to use show as we did here, um, but there are other ways to do it. So another way of looking at a frame is by looking at its byte stream, just like in Wireshark. So this is done using the hex dump function. So hex dump, and I give it the frame. This is very similar to Wireshark. Let's expand this a bit so you can see it. Um, actually, we can do even better than this and we can look at it inside Wireshark. So to do that, we can just write Wireshark frame. This opens up Wireshark for us. And here we can actually see the frame we created, ethernet, player, and so on. So this is the frame we've created in that we already know and appreciate. How cool is that? Okay, so now that we've learned how to create a frame, let's learn how to send it. Sending frames is done using send p as follows. So send p frame. Cool, so let us sniff in Wireshark while sending the frame to make sure that it's actually sent. So I'm gonna open up Wireshark now. Okay, so I started sniffing and now let's send the frame. Cool, and we can see that it has actually been sent. This is the frame we've created before and now we sent it. Note that we use send p with the p here only when we send an entire frame using the second layer and above. In future videos, we'll see another way of sending frames when we don't explicitly specify the second layer. So in this video, we learned how to create and send frames using Scapy. In the previous video, we had learned how to sniff, how to filter packets, and how to run a function on sniffed packets. All in all, we can do a lot with Scapy now. We'll get back to Scapy in later videos after we learn about the third layer, so we have more to talk about. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you get notified when additional videos are released. For now, I will leave you with an exercise to make sure that you can apply what you have learned. In this exercise, you will implement a simple protocol over Ethernet. In order to know that the frames belong to this protocol, all relevant frames must have the type field set to 1337 in hexadecimal base. The protocol is an echo protocol. That is, the client sends a request to the server and the server replies with the same data as in the sent frame. It would remind you of the ping utility we've seen in previous videos. So for the client side, Implement a script that asks the user for two parameters, the server's MAC address 
and a message. It will then send the message as raw data to the server's MAC address. For the server side, your server should sniff frames. And for every frame that belongs to our protocol, that is, has the right type, send back a frame that includes all the raw data from the client's request. For example, if the client sends a request with type 1337 in hex decimal and the raw data, hello, then the server should reply with type 1337 hexadecimal and the data, hello. Good luck and have fun playing around with KP. In the next video, we'll start getting to know the third layer. See you there. See you there.